2022 Kia K5 EX, this is the top of the line trim if you're not counting the faster GT trim with a larger engine. In today's market of crossovers, Kia still has no problem selling this large sedan. Today we're gonna to find out why. <laughs> Hey guys, since I just reviewed this vehicle last year, there are really no changes to it. So I'll be answering your questions about the Kia K5. If you're new to the channel, my name's Kirk. I talk about Japanese and Korean cars. If you like that, make sure to subscribe and let's go. Now we'll get into your questions here in a little bit. Let's just do a quick walk around what's new for the 2022 model year. So we have the new Kia logo on the front of the hood. Really, that's about it, as well as the new Kia logo on the back. But it is a good looking sedan with those aggressive amber daytime running lights, kind of like that fish scale sort of grill as well. We have these nice 18 inch wheels and we have these Pirelli P0 tires on here. Very nice tires for a vehicle of this class for sure. From the side, we have a, well, on this particular model, you can probably see that large glass panoramic roof, but you have that sloping roof line that goes all the way to the rear. And one of my favorite things about the Kia K5 are the taillights. So let me turn them on real quick. Okay, that's a lot better. We have, again, a very similar zigzaggy sort of style like those front daytime running lights. And then we have dotted lines across the back here that kind of reminds me of a dotted line in the road. Um, and then, of course, the new Kia badge back here as well. Now, unfortunately, for 2022, Kia has not getting ri got rid of the fake exhaust tips. Well, they're not really fake exhaust tips. They're almost just like fake cutouts. The real exhaust tip is real nicely tucked in underneath the bumper and we have this nice glossy black diffuser and glossy black finish here on this EX trim. Back in another review spot, we of course have a nice 360 camera that we typically see in other Kia and Hyundai products. Underneath the hood, we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's actually the same engine that I test drove last week in the Elantra inline, 180 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque in this particular car. Made it to an eight speed automatic and it's a wonderful combination. I feel like the torque is always there to get me up to speed. Um, it's pretty quiet overall. It's not very buzzy. Um, so I'll just do a quick zero to 60. I don't have my, you know, race meter out nothing crazy like that. And there's a bicyclist, so need to be somewhat respectful and uh, torque break about 2000 and go. <laughs> the, the launch, <laughs> the tires are not warm as I lost traction at around 5,000 RPM in first year. Anyways, I didn't even get to 60, but that gives you an idea of the acceleration. I think it's more than adequate for, for a vehicle of this price. It comes in around 33, 34K in this EX trim. More important than just the good torque delivery and uh, the, the adequate amount of power is that I'm getting 35 miles per gallon, and this is of course not a hybrid. Uh, I drove this to Okeechobee and back, uh, to help a friend get some video for fishing and uh, yeah I was getting 40 miles per gallon on the highway which is absolutely incredible for a large sedan and I feel like that is a good segue into the first question uh, JMM is asking about the driving assist the radar cruise control I think the radar cruise control is excellent it'll bring you all the way to a stop very smoothly it's not uh, jerky at all um, and then to get back going, if you're at a full stop with the radar cruise control on, you just have to press the gas pedal. So it's pretty seamless, very accurate, and, and very pleasant to use. But we're gonna get into the brakes here right when we get to this dead end sign and go. And the brakes are very linear, very progressive. They have a good feel to it, good feedback. They are a little bit touchy when you first start driving this vehicle. The initial touch is very uh, strong but once you get used to that, you never notice it again. Now there's a Sonata, that's the brother to this vehicle. And the Sonata Hybrid is an absolutely amazing vehicle. Make sure to watch out, uh, watch my review that I had on it. Pushing this vehicle to its limits, I feel like after 4,000 RPM or so, uh, you start running out of uh, the, the specialty of this engine which is low down torque and efficiency and it, it maybe feels more like a diesel than actually a gasoline engine maybe a little bit more like mazda's uh skyactiv g turbos but this is a much smaller engine than that more potent and larger mazda engine back to jmm's question about the lane keep system i found it very helpful on my hour and a half drive to Okeechobee and back another hour and a half. Like it, it works really well. And the little green steering wheel icon uh, pops up on the small MID. We don't have the digital gauges like we have 
on the top of the line Sonata, for example, which is fine for me. This vehicle being a little bit more sporty oriented has the traditional uh, analog tachometer, analog speedometer, analog fuel gauge, which I'm perfectly okay with. I don't need all the fancy screens behind the steering wheel as long as I can have the information that I need, uh, which is fuel economy 99% of the time. The large screen in the middle is what we come to expect on the higher trims of Kia and Hyundai products. The software is really good. We do have a, a Bose sound system in here that sounds really good in my opinion for a vehicle of this class of course android auto apple carplay unfortunately not wireless and we also don't have usb c's in this car at all we have five usb ports but they're all usb a's and they don't charge that quickly and grin shift is asking about the power of the gt trim it's unchanged from last year i'll put exactly what those numbers are on the screen and same thing with the gt line it has the same engine and torque and power numbers as this car um, you can get all-wheel drive on the gt line unfortunately you cannot get all-wheel drive on that on this particular ex line which is more expensive so i feel like that's uh, unfortunate um, because that's one of the things that this car has over the Sonata is all-wheel drive. The Sonata though has the hybrid which I'd probably take over every single trim of the K5 and Sonata. But anyways, I'll screen capture the colors on there. Some of them are exclusive to the GT and the GT line. Uh, so hopefully that gives you an idea of the power and colors for this vehicle. Larry Legend's also asking about exterior. I just answered that, but your question about the interior, I do like it in here. It is a bit plain, I guess you could say. I do prefer the traditional shifter over the push buttons of the Hyundai. And we also see push buttons in Honda models and Acura models, for example. But I do like this wood trim, whether it's real or not, I don't know, but it is a nice eye-pleasing experience. Uh, we have a little bit of glossy black plastic around the screen and around the shifter. We do have the volume knob, right? Long live the knobs. We have dual climate control knobs as well. No tuning knob, unfortunately, but I'll still, I'm happy with the volume knob. We have some aluminum trim here around the vents and around the door handles, and I was getting blind by the aluminum trim, and that happens around high noon here in sunny Florida. So, yeah, manufacturers, if you can get away with a glossy black and their highly reflective metallic interior trims, that would be excellent. Do you like the quality of the steering wheel? It has a great leather feel to it, very comfortable in my hands. And I think the Kia logo in the middle looks pretty classy. The back seat is a very nice experience. We have this gray bluish interior trim in here, which is excellent. It really makes me happy. Also being the EX trim, we have heated and ventilated seats, heated steering wheel, which work really well. The car was roasting in the sun at Lake Okeechobee. I put in those uh, ventilated seats on and it, it definitely helped me cool down my sweaty back. Uh, I just did a U-turn there, and that's one of the things I feel like this excels over the Sonata, is that the steering feel and the handling just feels a little bit more dialed in, a little bit more tuned, maybe for sport instead of the more comfort-minded Sonata vehicles. So if you're if you're into the more sporty driving mechanics, like I feel like the brake pedal is more touchy in this vehicle, and the handling is a little bit more dialed in. So if you're into that, the K5 is definitely going to be your cup of tea over the Sonata. Joseph is asking about the EX trim, which is this vehicle of the K5 versus something like the XLE on the Camry. And to be honest. I haven't driven a Camry in probably three or four years. <laughs> Toyota hasn't been sending me press press Camrys and I'm okay with that. Like midsize sedans, they don't excite me that much. So I'm okay with them not sending them to me <laughs> that much. But this K5, I think competes very well. Of course, when it comes to technology and features, there's no doubt it might even surpass uh, the Camry when it comes to uh, features and things like that. I mean, I feel like in terms of technology and features, it's almost luxury grade, except I don't have a fully digital MID. I don't have heads up display, but the panel roof in here is a sight to behold. It is absolutely massive and it is uh, better done than most Toyota panoramic roofs. Even on the Lexus end, this is a better panel roof than a lot of those Lexus uh, panoramic roofs. So the powertrain is not going to hold a candle to it, but you're going to get better efficiency uh, than the, the thirstier V6 for sure. I feel like the handling is on par. The brakes are on par. The styling is on par to the Camry XLE, in my opinion. Um, although the rear end, even though I like the rear taillights, I it just hurts me inside that we don't have real exhaust tips on the K5 as this is a more sporty sedan. 
In terms of road noise and wind insulation, I feel like this is probably right on par with the Camry as well. Maybe even a little bit better, to be honest. I haven't been in an XLE Camry in a long time. My uncle had uh, the base LE Camry and that thing felt like a 10 box. So this vehicle, <laughs> it definitely doesn't give me any of those hollow, uh, tenny vibes as some of the base Camrys do. Mark Coopers is wondering when those headlights are making it to other Kia products. And I would say it probably won't. You know, Kia and Hyundai products look very different from model to model. The exception is in the Kia lineup because they have that tiger nose grill, which is kind of a, a design staple. But for Hyundai, their grills, their headlines vary very much from model to model. But back to Kia, are we gonna see these amber daytime running lights in any other models? Uh, I, I highly doubt it. And if you look at the new Kia Telluride, they got rid of the, day, the amber daytime running lights for these more futuristic lights that I don't think look better. So they kind of took a step back in terms of headlight design there. So Dingolo is asking if it comes in a manual and it would have been awesome at the, that this vehicle would have been available in the manual. It's not, not even in the full blown GT, not in, even in the GT line. And I feel like that, that would have been an opportunity because who else, who else on the market has manuals in this uh, sedan segment? I guess midsize sedan, even though large sedans are all but dead at this point. So like, you know, who, who has a manual? Nobody. The last one I can think of would have been the Honda Accord, but they killed that years ago uh, with the manual transmission. So yeah, no manual. I think the last time it was on a Kia Optima, right? Because the K5 is the Optima. They renamed the Optima anyways for this generation. Uh, I think it was like 2012, the last time we saw a manual transmission here in the States on a K5 slash Optima. Naveen the Machine is asking about engine smoothness. I feel like this is a very smooth engine before 4,000 RPM, like we talked about earlier, after that, you really start running out of the juice of this engine. It gets a little buzzy after 4,000 RPM, but underneath, when you're in that torque, the happiness of the torque curve and where this car is gonna be most efficient, it's very smooth, very unnoticeable. You really don't notice the engine hardly at all unless you're pushing it at full tilt. Franz Van Julio is asking, who is this vehicle for uh, versus the Sonata? Sonata is definitely more for older people, uh, or people who just don't care about the flashy looks or or like the performance uh, tuned handling or the performance tuned braking. It's a little bit more of a soft ride in every sense of the word. This still has a really good ride feel to it in this K5, even though it's sportier looking, it's a little bit more of a sporty edge when it comes to driving dynamics, I believe. But to me, it really just depends on how young that person wants to look. This vehicle to me, it has a little bit too much flashiness at my age and my early 30s. Um, and I would prefer to be a little bit more incognito with the Catfish Sonata, especially the hybrid. Like, I love to drive the GT version of this car as well as uh, the inline of the Sonata, but for every day, commuting, livability, smoothness, more of that luxury feel. I'm picking the Sonata hybrid every single time. Last question, Garrett is asking, would I get this over a Stinger inline four? So the two and a half liter turbo with around 300 horse. Um, that is a great question. And I don't know exactly what the price of the, the uh, four cylinder Stinger is off the top of my head. Um, but let's just say they're, they're similar in price just to answer this question as best as I can. I think the Stinger looks way better than this vehicle. I prefer the driving mechanics of the rear wheel drive or the all wheel drive, uh, rear wheel drive base, all wheel drive system, if that makes sense. I would prefer to have that vehicle over this vehicle, no doubt, but I would still probably rather have the Sonata hybrid over all, all three of them, if that makes sense. Like I'm not out here to try to, try to get a lot of attention with how, with how the car looks, or I'm not trying to get a lot of attention on pushing this car to the max on the streets, um, which the Stinger, no doubt, is gonna drive and handle and look way better <laughs> than the Sonata and the K5. But I don't know, I just really, really enjoyed the Sonata hybrid. I've been talking a lot about that vehicle because it is the sister or brother to this vehicle, the K5, and there's no hybrid in the Kia lineup um, for this particular K5 here in the States. So I think it's time to summarize this vehicle. If you like the more aggressive looks, if you like having all these, you know, luxury grade features and amenities for around 33, 34K, that the, and, and get 35, 36 miles per gallon 
Um, this is a great view. Like, there's nothing I really don't like about it other than maybe some blinding trim at certain times of the day and the lack of USB-Cs and, and Android Auto Wireless. Like, other, those are just, like, small nitpicky things. Like, this is a very excellent vehicle top to bottom the looks look great real tips would have been even better the comforts there i really like this light colored interior um, i do really enjoy this small but torquey four-cylinder and efficient engine uh, and the ride quality is good and the noise insulation is good enough for the a vehicle in this class so kia has made a fantastic mid-size sedan it's just that there's a lot of competition out there and i would rather put my money down on its brother the, the the Sonata hybrid but that's just me I prefer fuel economy over you know sportiness and acceleration at this point in my life but there's no denying that the k5 looks a little bit more aggressive more outgoing more inspiring as well that it's it's uh catfish brother anyways guys I'm gonna end there thank you so much for asking those questions thank you to my members subscribe if you want more Japanese and Korean auto news but signing out from the 2022 Kia k5 with the new logos on it I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching and peace out.